Uh, my name is JC Polanco. I'm an attorney in New York. Uh, I live in the Bronx, and I'm very happy to be here with all of you on day two. Can't wait to hear your presentations. Judges? Hi, Hi. welcome back. Good to see you again. I'm Ellen Iwamoto. I'm the director of civics programs at the Annenberg Public Policy Center at the University of Pennsylvania, coming to you from Philadelphia. Hey, good afternoon once again. Welcome back. I'm Jeff Owen, uh, retired trade association executive living in the Washington, D.C. area. Looking forward to your presentation. Uh, can you introduce yourselves, please? Uh, yes, hello again. We are, team, we are Team Hamilton. We represent Mr. Bannister's seventh period class. I am Luke Tremblay. And another fun fact about Alexander Hamilton is his, his birth year was unknown. I'm Gavin Lofgren, and another fun fact about Alexander Hamilton, his birth year is unknown because he may have lied about it to get into college at an earlier age. And my name is Michael Lusov, and another note about Alexander Hamilton is the last note or letter that George Washington sent before he died was addressed to Alexander Hamilton. And uh, can you introduce your teacher? Uh, our teacher is and Jim our teacher is Mr. B oh, okay. um, our teacher is Mr. Bannister. He's the eighth grade history teacher, and um, he's been doing this for a long time. He's a fantastic teacher. Good, that's great. Thank you, Mr. Bannister. All right, let's begin. We are discussing what. What are the responsibilities of citizens? What role, if any, should the United States play in helping other nations or promoting democratic ideas and principles around the world? What are the advantages and disadvantages of nation states? What criteria should be used to determine which countries should be helped? And what kind and level of help the United States should offer these countries? And lastly, in what ways do nations of the world interact with each other? You may begin. A nation state is a sovereign state in which the citizens are almost entirely homogeneous in language and common descent. This means that the people of the state agree with all other citizens, culture-wise, belief-wise, language-wise, and are from a common descent. A nation state is simply an independent country with an established government having the authority to govern their citizens. There are more than 200 nation states in the world today. Some examples are China, Japan, Brazil, France, South Africa, and of course, the US. A nation state has many advantages with minor disagreements with their citizens and no centralized dictatorship, which allows their societies and economies to develop. A second advantage is that their environment encourages full agreement on decisions made by their state government, which can lead to the growth of democracy. And finally, nation states usually don't get into wars over territory. They do not possess the inherent need or desire to increase their territorial borders. Nation states also have a very large downside, which is their selfish and kingish tendencies. This is because the citizens all agree with each other and are always around people with the same beliefs. Everyone believes that their state is 100% correct in their principles and will beginning a Will beginning, will begin to attempt to force these believers almost like a king. A non-nation nation state, technically speaking, are those states, countries, or nations where there is no single ethnic group that has a sixty percent of the state's population. Is somebody muted? Who should be speaking right now, Luke? I can't tell if that's you. Oh yeah, sorry, okay. An example would be Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Turkey. The Kurds have resided in all of these countries, but they have, been, they have not been established or recognized as having a national identity within an, an internationally recognized country. Another example would be the Palestinians who currently reside in the recognized nation state of Israel. However, prior to 1948 with the official formation of Israel, Palestine was recognized as a geographic region located between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River. 
as much as I believe that democracy is one of, if not the best forms of government, I'm not 100% sold on the idea that the United States should put in a real effort to force spread democracy. The U.S. may arguably have a better governmental system. However, other nations have the right to determine their citizens' rights and government on their own without interference from other nations. These, these nations may have gained some ideas about government from the U.S., and for good reason. The U.S. has been a global superpower for over 50 years. I believe that other nations can and should get some ideas about government from the U.S., but the U.S. should not try to force these principles onto the other nations. Even though I believe that the U.S. shouldn't try to force democracy on other countries and na uh, nations, I still think that they should help these countries when they are in need. When I say in need, I am referring to the policies that could cause harm or danger to the world. A current example would be the sanctions that President Biden is placing on Russia. An example would be North Korea, which spreads their culture by force and intimidation. The level of assistance should equal the severity of the problem or concern. Nations of the world interact in many different ways, whether that be good things like trade, commerce, treaties, and ending wars. On the other side, they may get involved in bad things like wars, ending of alliances, and non-direct contact, <laughs> like ending trade with a specific country. Every time two or more nations interact, every nation in the world is affected in a, okay, in a um, positive or negative way. Great, thank you so much. I'd like to follow up with some questions. You know, Americans work very hard um, to make sure they pay their taxes to the government. And I just wanted to know what your thoughts were regarding what kind of uh, costs do American bear? And are there any benefits for our intervention in giving foreign aid to other countries? Well, there are benefits to like uh, foreign countries, say with our, um, say how we pay taxes. Our money could lead to something better if uh, the government knows how to deal with the money and then uh, say establish it to say, for example, like say if Mexico was like having a horrible problem in there, say like maybe disease, what is it? The money from the taxpayers could also help uh, from and give them financial support and maybe help them buy what they need in order to keep on living on as, uh, as their job is to pay taxes. So just kind of help um, uh, America with financial needs. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, my question is um, touching, uh, we're looking at the constitution. What provisions in the Constitution allow the United States to um, interact with other nations, uh, you know, it, with treaties or, or anything else, with war? What in the Constitution says that the United States can take on these roles globally? Um, well, um, it is. I believe it is stated that the um, president has the ability to um, start wars, create treaties, and commerce of trade among different nations around the world. Anybody else? But then there is also a uh, manifest destiny, which also uh, doesn't require another state in order to get into our, uh, for example, like um, what is it, presidential election? It kind of no, not manifestancy. I'm sorry. Uh, Monroe Doctrine. It's uh, what is it? It uh stops from other countries from like kind of getting into our own business and stops us also from getting into their own uh, their own political business and stuff. Okay, hey, thank you. So what are some important examples of treaties and agreements with other nations and why are they important? An example could be um, when uh, 
World War Two with um Japan once they bombed uh Pearl uh, Pearl Harbor and America kind of what is it dropped a ball on Hi Hiroshima they both had a treaty to uh kind of made Japan surrender to them this was important because this would kind of prevent Japan from fighting back and this would prevent the U.S. from doing any more harm to Japan because if they didn't sign we'd probably do a little more if they didn't stop either. Right. Other examples? I believe an example would also include the Louisiana Purchase where the United States uh, after winning the Revolutionary War bought the Louisiana territory from France. And that was sort of like, that was sort of an agreement kind of, or trade. It was a purchase of so trade, yeah. Anything else? Great, thanks. Why are organizations like NATO important to the American security? Could you rephrase the question? Sure, there are organizations, alliances um, like NATO uh, that the United States uh, is currently a participant in. Why are these organizations important to the security of the United States? Well, if, uh, if it secures other countries, it could also help us be secure because if you benefit another country with security, they will have a liking to your country because you're helping them. So like any normal person would be, if you help them, they'll help you eventually. Or if you help them, what is it? They'll uh, be happy and they'll potentially show you friendship. So that's also really good for alliances and treaties to prevent war. Thank you. Uh, so uh, one of the, the parts of the original question was, in what ways do nations of the world interact with each other? So thinking about the pandemic and vaccines and uh, vaccinations, it's very unequal among the different nations about access, production, and et cetera. How, how do you think uh, the U.S., what the U.S. role should be in this, or how should nations be interacting with each other? I personally believe that since we're more one of the wealthier countries, we should bring more medical supplies to poorer countries uh, who actually need the supplies, say like vaccines. The vaccines could really help people in need, say like, for example, uh, in India, there's not much space, but yet there's a lot of people. And uh, uh, some people are actually quite poor in there and they can't really afford some of the stuff that could prevent, uh, protect them from other viruses and uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, since, like I said, we're uh, wealth, uh, uh, really wealthy, we can help these poor uh, countries with uh, healthy health needs uh, just to protect them from, uh, what is it, diseases from their, even their own countries if they want as a refugee and just like that. I like I like to respectfully disagree with my uh, colleague here. Uh, I don't believe you should help every uh, country that's poor or in need of supplies because that could in turn violate uh, different treaties and agreement with other con other countries and nations. Thank you. So <clears throat> we have a constitution. It, it governs by the rule of law, what our government can and can't do. So what elements of American constitutionalism have influenced other countries? 
But we are at time, uh, so I think we're ready to go into All our. Right. We'll be done. Okay. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit of feedback. I um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I know it's not easy to be thinking on your feet, and I commend you and your teacher for uh, participating in the National Invitational during what has been probably the most difficult year for everyone. Um, not easy uh, you know, for, for students and teachers alike. So um, thank you for that. And thank you for the presentation. I thought um, you did a, you know, a fine job of responding to the questions. And um, obviously you, you had, you worked hard and were prepared for this. So good luck in the Invitational. Yes, thank you for uh, your presentation and, and uh, you know, obviously worked really hard and, and had good mentoring by your teacher. I um, um, enjoyed the conversation. I enjoyed the fact that you were able to mix it up a little bit and disagree with each other. I think that's healthy and uh, demonstrates the fact that not all opinions are in a straight line and um, that was great. So um, good luck for the rest of the day and uh, thank you so much for letting us join you today. Great job. Uh, I really like the way that you guys, <laughs> you guys were quick on your feet. I know that question on uh, uh, NATO, uh, you may have been caught off guard, but you were able to pivot and put the question into context and you answered it pretty well, I think. Um, and, and, and I really appreciated the back and forth um, that you had with your team members, Gavin. Uh, so I'm excited uh, to see what you guys are going to be able to do for the rest of the day. Thank you.